Welcome to the DBS View. The importance of the US Federal Reserve's three rounds of quantitative easing for asset markets can't be understated. Risk asset markets have posted solid gains in the past few years. Gold sought to record highs while the US dollar weakened. As a result of the Fed's aggressive stimulus, volatility is plunged across the board and financial conditions have eased. As the Fed prepares markets for an eventual exit from unconventional easy policy, markets have been unsettled on the timing of when the Fed will start cutting back its asset purchases. Markets are also worried about the size of the cuts and the future course of monetary policy. Will the Fed hike rates soon after it ends its bond buying programs? Fed fund futures show markets are beginning to price in a rate hike in 2014 and remain fully priced in for a Fed rate hike mid-2015. Now, equities have suffered sizable declines since late May. Credit spreads have widened, US dollar has gained across the board, gold fell to a three-year low and volatilities across asset markets have picked up. The sell-off in emerging markets has sparked concerns about potential outflows given private capital inflows jumped post the Great Recession in search of higher yields. This creates the risk of a negative feedback loop where the sell-off in emerging assets triggers capital outflows and weaker currencies. This leads to reduced confidence and a downgrade in economic expectations further fueling the sell-off. Emerging market growth expectations have been downgraded in recent months, both in absolute and relative to G10 economies. Recent weak emerging markets and Asia macro data haven't helped in altering those expectations. Furthermore, domestic factors like unrest in Turkey, a ratings outlook cut for Brazil, labor unrest in South African mines, uncertainty about reforms in India, and a slower turnaround in China have weighed on sentiment. How capital flows react to incoming data and policy developments and how confidence shapes up will be key for emerging markets and Asia in coming months, suggesting that volatility could remain elevated. However, the long-term structural Asia story remains intact, including the Asia consumerism story, supportive demographics and relatively stronger government balance sheets. So beyond the current correction, the structural positives of the region could support the downside and boost Asia markets over the longer term. We remain overweight equities, emerging markets and Asia ex Japan on a 12-month tactical asset allocation basis. Thank you for watching the DBS View.